What's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have OnlyFans model and author Elena St. James. Um, she's here where she discusses having a baby when you're older, dating uh, older women, uh, honesty in relationships, what women have to worry about in dates, and how you date an older woman. A uh, hotter woman, that's right. And also, uh, thank you to those of us, uh, those of you guys supporting us on Patreon. Uh, it's important because it keeps the show going, and that's where we do bonus content and listener mail. So if you want to join us and get more episodes on Patreon, it's patreon.com slash manschool202. And today with uh, Elena, we continue our conversation with Elena St. James as we talk about more dating tips, uh, how OnlyFans almost went out of business, how that affected people, the boundaries of social media, and then we talk uh, sexual fetishes. So a yeah, lot of cool a stuff, this was a, good a lot of good stuff happening. So uh, join us over patreon.com slash manschool202. And then also uh, enjoy this week's show. Peace. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. What's going on? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. This is going to be a good one, Harry. You ready to rock and roll? Absolutely, Dante. Absolutely. Born ready. You well, in the, you you in the, you're that. in the building. You outside? I'm outside. Is that All what right. the kids are saying? I'm outside. Yeah, that, that's what they're saying. Uh, wow. Why don't you do the introduction for me? That's right. Uh, the guest on today's show is, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of different people from all over the world, from uh, an author, an amazing author, the fantastic Elena St. James. Yeah. Elena. What's hey, up, hello. Elena? How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? You look fantastic. I'm, I'm Thank loving you. I the. I'm, I, look, I look washed out, but then you know I'm Norwegian German heritage, so I kind of always do. Uh, well, you know, delicious, delicious white people. <laughs> well, so I've been told. <laughs> yeah. Um, Elena, what's going on? Um, you wrote a book, yes? Yeah. I Talk mean, to me. Let let's let's uh, use that wrote a book term loosely okay because it's, it's not like it's war and peace okay. um you know it's not i'm not going to get a pulitzer i've already taken myself out of that okay um, <laughs> but it's how to date hot older women by me okay a mature model so okay. um but you can see like you don't even need your reading glasses because it's like really big print okay <laughs> and it's wide space basically i um been doing this mature modeling thing for about a year okay. and so it's new right you know rather new i'm in my 50s and mm. one of the things that i you look you look great for 50s i have to well, say you look great for 50. thank you I, I i might have a blur filter on i don't know you nah. know i don't know um well the filter can only do so much we've seen some people with the filters on so <laughs> you know i don't i don't even know so but um thank you it's all my clean living Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, I, so I made this, I made this book cause I had heard about, you know, like, well, writing books and, and I was like, um, I asked some of my fans, I'm like, because they always ask me for advice or how do I get, because my, okay, let me just backtrack my core demographic. I realized was between like 25 and 40, okay. which was shocking to me. Cause I had always been told by my mom. Um, and she's old school, you know, she's in her eighties. Uh, she was like, you know, once, once you get to be 40, 50, you disappear as a woman, mm. like you kind of disappear to men. So when, when you I say your demographic, your demographic, where for the people who don't on, know on only fans and on Instagram. So like Instagram, yeah. you know, I started, um, doing that. That's where most of the only fans, girls, models have a presence right mm. there. And on Twitter. TikTok, you know, all of YouTube, all the various different social media channels. My first two subscribers, April 4th, 2021, I'll never forget it because it was like they were 28 and 29. I'm like, really? Yeah. <laughs> what? Right, right. You know, because I had always, even in my dating life, and we can talk about this later, in my dating life, guys that were my age, as I got older, it would be like they'd want to date really young girls. Right. And I'd be like 37, mm -hmm. 40, 45, whatever. And that, and they would be about the same age, but then I would notice that their age range, this is online dating would be like maybe down to 18. And I'd be like, 
really? Yeah, yeah. You're really going to date somebody that just graduated high school and you're like a 45 year old manager of a company? Like, right. That is weird. Yeah. But, you know, like I'm in a different thing. This is not dating. This is fantasy. What I create is fantasy. And, but I noticed it's like 28 year old, 29 year old. So I Well, let me ask my- you this. What, yeah. what, when you say OnlyFans, do you do porn as well or do you just. Or, I'm, solo, or it's... I'm a solo creator. Um, okay. Actually, I was just on the phone with um, a large porn studio today, and I'm just like, yeah, I don't know, because they contacted me. Mm. And I was like, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know. I'm a relationship girl. So mm. I don't know if I could do that, like, to just, like, jump into it. Because right. before I started, I, I had never, let's, let's, let's put it this way, I'd, I'd never shown my boobs mm. <laughs> on right. camera. Like, I... I was one of those girls, like, I didn't even want to send selfies when I was dating somebody right. because I thought, oh, God, what if it got leaked? Well, <laughs> were you so, married before or no? Or... No, I was I was engaged. Um, engagement broke up. It was a long term relationship. I had a kid on my own, which was important to me. Um, and really, since then, he's been my priority. Um, so I've dated a lot, but I haven't been married. Um, it was almost a pseudo marriage because we were together and living together. It's for Is so this long. the same man that you had the child with or no? No, no. I had, I had my child on my own, like sperm bank. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Six, seven, seven. Okay. Cause I was 40. So what happened? I was 40. I was single and I thought I'm heartbroken. Um, I'm not going to find Mr. Right in time. Like right. I can't take right. that chance. Tick tock, right. tick tock. Yeah. Um, I have to make this happen on my own. And I'm I'm somebody that's never um, let conventional ways of doing things stand in my way of my happiness. OK. And I thought, you know what, I'll find Prince Charming later. Um, and so I've done it on my own. And I talk to women, younger women or women that are in that kind of that that I call it the younger, older age. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've talked to them like, you know, it's an option. What do you mean? Like maybe 35? Yeah. Like know, when, yeah. The, when the TikTok really starts to yeah, happen. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Because you can't get that back. And I actually address that in my, my book. And I'm like, if you're with a, a younger, older woman that's still maybe in that baby making time, be respectful. Mm-hmm. Know that she has a limited time to have a baby. Mm-hmm. Don't waste her time if you What's don't want to be window? part of that. What is the uh, age well, range of that? I window? mean, the window is different for, for everybody, but I will tell you, it's shorter than a lot of women think it is because we see these celebrities having babies at 45 and 50. And what they don't tell you is they used a donor egg. Mm. <laughs> they, um, they used assisted technology, you know, like they're not. It's listen, expensive. I, I went through it's a lot expensive. of if you don't, if you don't have the money. You need a lot of can. vitamins and supplements yeah. and special medications you need, too. You need for, fresh Let's face it, you need fresh eggs. And Mm -hmm. once you're past 40, your chances of having a baby with your own eggs is just so tiny. Right. So really, I mean, you're talking 35. When I got, so at age 35, you're considered a geriatric pregnancy. Yeah. Yeah. 35. Yeah. You know? So I think think they've actually adjusted that down some now so it's very possible i mean uh well when i was 41 i was like okay yeah. if i'm geriatric at 35 i don't yeah. know what am what am i <laughs> and right. they're like you're just in really good shape you know but that's one of the things i address like don't waste a woman's time if she's in that baby making be respectful of that because it's a real thing you don't oh, as a woman like that's a, that's a lifetime thing if you haven't had a kid and you want to have a kid don't mm. string a woman on because well here's a, here's something uh, you know I I like to you know push back a little bit on that because here's the thing that happens uh, you know I'm I'm always in in you look at a situation where you know people say don't string a woman on and what what I've learned through time is there are no real victims there's only volunteers if a woman is in a situation where she knows specifically that she's looking for something very specifically, and I understand 100% that we get attached and there's the emotions involved, there's the emotional attachment, but if you're, if somebody is not doing what you want them to do, it's because they don't want to. I mean, we do what we want to do. That's, just, you know, that's like that whole saying of, you know, she's not really that into you. If you're, if you got a guy and he's not making time for you, it's because he don't like you. 
And right. the, what happens is we don't want to deal with the truth of that. And so we hold on and we make excuses for it. So I get at a certain period of time where you go, well, you know, it, this is six months. But if you're talking about children and somebody's not not moving forward with the, with the, the, the positive of this is something that we're going to do, this is important to you, it's because he doesn't want to. Now, if we sit and if, if the woman sits and, and, and I mean, you don't, you can, you, all you have to do is really look at what people do, not what they say, because what they say is, is means nothing. I mean, an apology, I always say this, an apology without action is not a real apology. It's, it's all just bullshit. So, in a sense, I get what you mean about being mindful, but people are going to do what they want to do. The, the real idea is that I think a lot of times men will not say what they want to say because they don't want to hurt, hurt somebody's feelings. And, and even sometimes even when a guy, because I'm brutally honest about what I'm willing to do and what I'm not willing to do, and, and they still don't leave if that's the case. <laughs> You know, um, because it's it's a woman's I mean, because as a guy, we learn the, the, the dynamic of rejection from the time that I found little girls attractive with the little ruffle panties and the whole deal. Mm. Um, I was like, you know, I was here. Do you like me? Check. Yes. Check. No. I mean, I was that rejection is where women don't really have to deal with that until much later or in the in the context of relationships can you talk about that a little bit more yeah it's it's very true and i i'm definitely i i've been called clinically direct mm. because i am clinically direct when it comes to relationships and and i guess some of that we're all um tinged on things that we've lived in this long-term relationship that i was in we both wanted a baby it was infertility issues um from both sides and when it didn't happen quick enough, you know, I, and I retrospectively, I look and I go, wow, I spent a lot of time hoping, but to touch on what you're saying, yeah, I think a lot of women, nobody is a victim. Everybody is an, a choice. It's a choice. Um, but what I can say is that, yeah, we stay in situations and oftentimes women, myself included, you're hoping that you can change them right. or if the circumstance can change. And it's so true. I, you just don't listen to what anybody says. It's actions speak louder than words. Right. It is. It really is that. And you touch upon something, your acronym, the ACE. Yeah. I love that. I love it because that is so true. It's like the authenticity and the credibility and the empathy. And I will say the credibility, that is key. It's, right. What I found in my dating life, and I've dated a long time, I've dated a lot of like from the dating apps, right. if you do what you say you're going to do, even if it's difficult. Like, I think women, and I'm sure men, we're understanding to a certain extent. I mean, sure. if you get in a car accident, like I sure. get it. But if yeah. you say you're going to call at a certain time and then you go somebody, right. you've lost it. You lost me. I, right. I will never trust you again. Was it a big deal that you didn't call when you said you were going to call? Right. No, in the scheme of things, it's not. But no. on a trust level, but it is a it is a big thing. It degrades your value the the value of your word little by little. Exactly, I, and yeah. I, I'll never you know like then that just just seeds and it and it does tell your character. Sure. It, it sure. tells who you are. It's like, something something that I say I I haven't said this in a while, but you, know, you don't have to eat the whole birthday cake to know it's made with rotten eggs. All you need yeah. is a spo- all you need is a spoonful. And uh, but what what I think also happens is when people and, and there's something else I say sometimes I say my honesty sharpens your truth, meaning how honest I am either forces you to be truthful or it forces you to be to, to have to lie so much that it makes you uncomfortable that you need to you need to get the fuck out. So what you find is people that are really not credible, who are inauthentic and not credible, um, when you're upfront and you're honest about it, the people will run the other hills because they really want that wiggle room so that they can be full of shit. And so if I'm full of shit and you're full of shit and we're both operating in this gray area, 
then, you know, I don't really know. You don't really know. We stay together. We kind of float. And then at the end, when you don't end up with what you want out of this or I don't end up, I get to blame you. You didn't say this, this, you know, when it's, it's really, it's all bullshit because honest people, honest people force make, make dishonest people uncomfortable and they would rather not. not deal with you than deal with your honesty. And so being upfront and honest and, and being clear about what you want is really the point. When we stick around and we know we're not getting what we want, what we're saying is, I, I I'm gonna I'm a little dishonest too, and uh, cause I'm you're telling me what it is in essence. I'm reading this, but I don't want to hear this, so I'm gonna maybe it'll change, maybe it'll, which I I totally get. It's a human nature thing, but I I find that I get you know I don't have a problem ever getting women because of the honesty because but you got to be righteous in order to do that you got to actually be the guy in order to have credibility you got to be the dude that you say you are and and women find that more attractive than a, a six-pack with cum gutters you know you it's oh, it's, it's you, you know feel, as a woman you feel safe you feel safe there is nothing that's sexier then if you're a woman and you're with a man and you feel safe and it's not because they have they're built like you and they're big and and strong and muscular it's that they feel safe that they are emotionally safe sure. and that you know, that, that there's not a hidden weirdness you right, mentioned but... something else on one of your things the cake batter you know what that reminds me of oprah yeah. has a saying i think it was a maya angelou where it's like believe when somebody shows you who they are believe, believe them, them the first time yeah. believe them yeah I got to tell you, even with my OnlyFans, even with my OnlyFans, it really it kind of is across the board. When a guy comes in and he says something really like that's, you know, kind of upsetting because I don't put out there, obviously, I'm a nice person. I just started this. Like, I'm a mom. I'm a nice Midwest. Not that you can't, you can be nice yeah, yeah, sure, wherever, sure. but it's yeah. like, but I'm kind of like, you know, I come at this open hearted and I'm like, okay, I like to play. Let's have fun sexy playtime. I'm not too extreme. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, do I get naked? Yes. I mean, I don't even know. Like, you know, I, I get some soft porn. I don't know. What's the difference? Soft porn, hard porn. You know, I'm, I'm by myself, you know, right. so it's self pleasure. It's those kind of things. Right, right. But you believe somebody the first time and when somebody comes in hot and they say something just crude and give me rude, an exact give me an example of what you mean. Um, <laughs> something that stands out to you. They're like, uh, can I see you fucking a real dick? And uh, I'm like, whoa, well, hi, welcome yeah. to my page. You know, it's like the, that's the first that, letter. That's the that's first the message. First message I get. It's mm -hmm. just it kind of as a woman, I, I'm like, whoa, OK. Right, um, right. I, and then I'm like, well, OK, as I've mentioned, I'm a solo creator. Right. Solo means it's me. A lot of me. Right. A lot of me. Right. right. But it's me. You know, so it's like when they come in hot like that or rude or, mm -hmm. oh, God, some, and I know this is across the board to all OnlyFans creators because I know a lot of them, um, when they expect that we're prostitutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, uh, no. Well, I mean, the reason yeah, I mean, why that, sure but, the, some, but right, the, re, to be really honest, the, re, the reason why they're thinking that is because that is, that is on the table a lot of times. A lot of these people are, and they are, and, and it's fine that you're not. I mean, one of the things that, I, you know, I, like, so so I was a male stripper for about 10 years from like 89 to 99. And one of the things that I always said is that I would never, I would never sell my body. Like now when I made that, <laughs> when I made that boundary, nobody wanted to buy it, right? <laughs> So it was easy to it was easy to make those set up, set up those boundaries and a lot of times those those kind of moral and ethical boundaries you have to set them before those boundaries are questioned um, because if you don't it's a slip it becomes a slippery slope because even on the only like, like naked play and and self creators and stuff I've seen girls slip down on that thing where they you know I, I remember a girl I, I managed a strip club. And the girl was a waitress and she wanted to she she wanted to make a few dollars. So she went on stage. And then I, I remember uh, her going. I, I was managing and She said, oh, the girl's name was Legs. She, I go down. I, she's crying. 
So I go, I go, look, you don't have to do this. I mean, you asked to do this. You don't ever have to do this again. And she said, yeah, I'll just go back to waitressing. I had quit the job. And when I came back, when I came back, she was doing an anal sex, live sex act four months later. Mm. Um, huge, like 12 inch dick. She's riding. I hope she was dude. closing. Uh, well, I, I don't know. It. I don't even know if she was closing, yeah, but that's the whole that's a thing. <laughs> and she was riding this, and the girls were like, "Go oh, ahead, get it." It was just insane. The on. Because yeah, it was insane, and I remember this girl. So what I what you find is that those boundaries, those ethical boundaries, you have to set up. The other thing is, once you've crossed that line, you can cross that line. So I mean, you're doing this as a mom, and 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 this is. You, you like the sexual play and so on and so forth, and you have to consider the fact that you're, you know, that you, that you have a son or daughter. I have a son. You know, yeah. So you have to consider that and all of these things. But the bottom line is, those once you cross the line, even if you cross the line for $50,000, $50 you'll cross the line for. You just have to be in circumstances that make that $50 as yeah. important as fifty thousand. Are you saying inflation is a factor? <laughs> well, well, I, not well. Drug, you know, if you're if you get strung out on drugs and you've crossed that line for fifty thousand, yeah. you're crossing for fifty. But that's it a form just, of inflation because to somebody who's smoking crack, <laughs> ten dollars is the ten dollars. Five hundred dollars. That's a lot. Yeah. Relative. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so it's interesting. Um, you know, the the setting those boundaries. Um to to you have to kind of set those boundaries and so i would never cross that bound now i would have sex with somebody because she wanted to have sex with me but i would just never do it with an exchange of of money and one of the reasons why they're coming at you is because other girls do you know right. they're not just pulling that out of the, you know what i mean it's just not yeah, no, I, I know and i i have actually friends that used to be escorts you uh -huh. know that i've met through this world so i i mean i get that that's a real a real thing but you know i don't really I try, I try to be very upfront on my page about right, right, right. before they even sign up, like solo creator, you know, like these kind of things. I try to make it as clear as possible. So that's, that can be, you know, off putting. Um, but you had mentioned something on one of your podcasts about the whole, um, every time a woman meets somebody or goes out with somebody, they have to yeah. think, is this guy going to kill me? Yeah. Is this guy that's on the and table. It's, it's on the table. And as a woman who has been single and dating most of my adult life and somebody that I, you know, I have had, and mo as most women, unfortunately, most women, regardless of what profession they're in, have had some sort of abuse, you know, sure. have had sure. some encounter where it was scary. And I've had that. That was that when I was a teenager, most of us have had that, unfortunately. We have to think about that. And if you was this a dating situation, an older no, guy, or it was a dating situation. Uh -huh. It was first boyfriend, you right, know. Right. But um, so all women have to think about if I'm going to meet this guy, this is a safety issue. Not yeah. you know, this is yeah. a safety issue. I've always been cautious. I've always met in public places when I was just dating, right. you know. But now this being in this platform kind of raises the stakes. Plus, mm -hmm. now I'm a mom, so it's like. There's yeah. nothing more important than keeping my kids safe. Right. So, you know, like it was something I weighed before yeah. I started doing the OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. But it out but it also has been life changing monetarily. And you bring up like, you know, how much would be enough to make you go over that line. Right, right. Um, you know, like I talked to this big studio today and I was just like, Yeah, I don't know. You know, like I don't know if I'd be comfortable with that. And they weren't offering me a ton. They've got deep pockets. They're very well known. I'm not going to say their names mm -hmm. because I'm not comfortable with it. But, um, but you know, but I since I haven't done any uh, collaboration on my page yet, you know, they're like, you know, maybe you should just do a collaboration because we don't want to put a whole set together right. and then have you kind of flake out or out. freak out at the end. I, I'm like, mm -hmm. no, I agree. Like that makes total. Well, sense how did you? How did you? How did this all start, Elena? This uh, this oh, journey yeah. for you? Yeah, the whole thing. Like, how, what got you into this? You know, actually, there were there was one main article, then there was a second article that I saw in like Yahoo News or something, and it was like, mom makes x amount of money every month and she's doing this and i'm like really like i used to do what, like was, what was that amount elena 
$150,000 a month. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and I went, and I went, wait a second. She's not having sex with anybody. Mm. And she's, and, and she's making this and she's at home and yeah. she's not traveling and she's not meeting strangers. And, but she's doing this from home. So for and, you, and, it was the appeal of working remotely pre pandemic. Yeah, it was work, <laughs> yeah. It was, it was working from home. And it was setting my own hours and the ability to make, I thought, God, if I could even make a tenth of what she's doing. Right. That would be incredible would be money. Life, yeah. This would be life changing for me. Now, at first I didn't show my face. And then my two first subscribers, I, I looking back, I'm like, why did they even subscribe? I mean, right. I have a decent, but I have a mom bod, you know, it's a decent body, but um, I'm like, now I just laugh at that. I'm like, wow, they subscribed to me and, and they had only seen, you know, from here down and they, and then I was like, well, this is what my face looks like. So what do you think? Would this help? And they're like, you need to start your face. <laughs> so I did. And Instagram the first month I had 10,000 followers, but my key is that I was smiling. There's a lot of sexy girls. Mm -hmm. They don't smile. Now, first of all, I smile because I think it's hilarious that I'm in my fifties and I'm doing this. I like, I literally am like tickled pink. I'm just thinking like, this is insane. Right. right. People actually want to see this, you know, it's funny to me. Like, why? You know, I mean, you're, you're an attractive fun. woman and I, uh, and clearly you're educated and, and you, you, you have a really kind face and, and uh, you know, I mean, I, I think what happens is, uh, you know, what's interesting when you watch porn and you watch some of like the old school porn where you have these women with the the lips are done and the, the tip, tits are like basketballs and the, the, this, you know, and they're wearing the, the I mean, it's I, I understand that sometime that was a you had that classic porn body. Yeah what we realize is it, what's really interesting is with the internet and social media um this it, and this is we, we were just talking about this in terms of in terms of um uh black filmmakers and this is interesting how you can prior to um the internet and social media I, i've said this before a black film was a film that had black people in it there was black was a genre mm. of film simply because they were black and now because it's multiple streaming services and so on you have black horror films and black love stories and black suspense and black so there's black is not a genre so what's interesting is the same thing i'm i'm looking at this correlation with the porn industry that at one time there was these classic big big fake titties, hard fake titties, basketball titties, that was the term, and they basically decided that this is what they wanted. And now what you have is, you know, you have BBWs, you have, you have, um, you know, MILFs, and you have all these categories where people, the, the consumers are deciding what I like. This is what I like. And right, the MILF category as at all <laughs> is so popular and this person that i just talked to today said well you know guilt is getting really popular too too yeah 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 i mean this because it's it's giving people an opportunity to to unhinge in terms of what they find attractive or what turns them on and nobody can define that so the powers that be and the gatekeepers don't get to make those decisions anymore it's um, like fashion dante think about yeah. fashion now i don't know how old you i don't i don't know if you talk I'm 50, about it. i'm 55. okay you're my age you get mm -hmm. this right so when we were growing up yeah um you know it was the cheryl teagues it was the cheryl Lab. very the very specific lane that you had waspy yeah. blonde you know, like I look share, like share to me was exotic. And I was yeah. like, Oh, I can look at her yeah. because she's exotic. She doesn't look like this kind of classic Grace Kelly kind of classical blonde beauty. Yeah. So I looked at her. Um, and I remember, I, you know, I've always had really full lips. I remember being a kid and you remember this too, then yeah, sure, sure. when full lips was not a thing. You know, well, like it was yeah, for, for white girls, it was it was always a thing for us. Yeah, and black, right, right, right. But yeah, but what as, the when you talk about runway, yeah. and and the runway women were so skinny, they yeah. didn't have curves, and and so Kate when you Moss. look at 
Yeah, when you're looking at Instagram now and you see these models and the bodies that they home and some some like curvy and 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 voluptuous and some muscular and still curvy. It, it's just an it's an interesting um dynamic when the gatekeepers have been removed. Exactly. Now now somebody else gets to talk. Yeah. It's not just yeah. the guy in an ivory tower at or Anna Wintour with Vogue, right? Yeah. That's deciding, no, this, we want her to look like a clothes hanger. Hey, I, I, I did a little bit of modeling when I was in my late teens mm -hmm. and at my thinnest, I was always buxom. I was always big chested, you know, eighth grade. I remember some kid came in, wow, you've got the biggest tits here in middle school. And I'm like, great. Um, what, 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 a... what's your cup size? What you... I'm a triple D. Really? <laughs> Natural. No. Yeah. 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 So, and, and that's the thing, the natural thing is such a big deal. Like oh, yeah. I never, I was always like, well, they're not perky and you know, but they're natural, right? So yeah, it's I, I like the, gravity. Elena, I like a little swing. I like a little <laughs> swing on it. I like, you know. Awesome give. Yeah, I want a little give. I like a uh, little swing. Are you silly? Are you yeah, kidding? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but when I was do, trying to do the modeling thing, like I'm tall, I'm 5'10". So when I was, that was good but I was too buxom. So yeah. even when I was at my thinnest and I see pictures and I'm like, I look like a victim of, yeah. you yeah. know, eating disorder. I was so thin and I had like, but I still had a, like a, a full B cup, even at yeah. my thinnest. Right, and right. they were like, well, you'd have to lose another 15, 20 pounds. They were like, yeah. get those big old tits and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> those, and I was like, like, take a those take those tits delicious. and you Get them in this face Get, right uh, now. <laughs> and then get the fuck out of here. And you know, here's the other thing. I don't have a particularly big butt. And I was talking to another creator and we're both like very, you know, we're white, whatever. And we have white butts and it's not, it's not juicy. You know, it's yeah. just, but we talk about how we, and she's older too. We talk about how we have to position ourselves to try to make them look make a bigger. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, and and she goes, God. And sometimes I almost throw my back out when I'm trying. And I'm like, I know. I'm trying to do these things. Or you know that one position where a woman's kind of down, and then her butt's like. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I swear to God, I could throw my back I'm, I'm out. I'm very, I'm very familiar with that position. <laughs> <laughs> Elena, so how does so how do you end up writing this book? Okay, so. And the funny thing is I'd always get these questions. I'd get these young guys and they would ask me questions and all this stuff, or they would come at me with really wacky assumptions, mm. you know, like they'd be um, on only guns. They'd be like, well, I'm only 25. And I'd be like, well, you're right in my demographic or, right. you know, I'm only 29 and I jerk off to you every day. And I'm like, well, good. You're on the older side, but I'm glad to have you here. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, but they, they would come up with these kind of, Sometimes they were right on, but sometimes they were kind of wacky with their assumptions or what they would think that I would want. Want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And so I thought, God, you know, and, and then I saw something about like um, books and then like smaller books and self-publishing and that you can do this. And I thought, you know, I should write a book. Mm. It was one of those moments where you just go, I should probably do this. I wonder if yeah. I could, could I do this? I don't have the, I don't want to do a big book. But then when I started talking to some of my fans, they're like, well, would you bullet point it? You know, like they didn't want to read a long book. They don't want to read a long book. Right. So right. I started writing and I started doing the kind of the sketch of, you know, the content. The outline, yeah. The outline, thank you. And, um, and I was like, yeah, like I've got some, some of this stuff in the book is applicable whether you're a 60 year old guy that wants to date a 50 year old or a 35 year old that wants to date a 45 year old it's really about the mindset of an older woman and because i know so many hot older women and you know i i kind of know what their mindset is and i am one and i've dated as a younger person and i'm dating now so i know the difference so there are really key similarities and i think that's something dante that you touch on it's it's like just simple respect. Yeah. It's yeah. being respectful. Yeah. You know, women are really going to respond to a guy that tr that makes her feel safe. That yeah. doesn't it doesn't matter if she's 20 or 50. Right. That's across the board or 70. Right. Right. The differences are I think my opinion older right. women are less likely to take shit um for very long. Um 
And we have other priorities. We have kids, we have aging parents. I address that. Like, don't think that you are going to be number one. If she has kids, her kids are probably always going to be number one. Right, right. She has aging parents. That adds a stressor. You know, you start seeing mm-hmm. that your parents are, um, you know, my dad's passed and I had to deal with that. Like, you know, maybe we have a house and we have a mortgage and we have to get the gutters fixed. And like, yeah. those are things that if you're a 25 year old and you're just you living in an apartment, sex in the city style yeah. and having, but like, you have no clue about that. Yeah. So the priority is different, right? Well, I, and, I think there's a concern. You got to have a concern about what her lifestyle outside of this dating thing, which, um, you know, you can as well, you could just as well go, uh, this is not for me. And maybe the, the, the aesthetics of having an older woman is what I like, but I don't like the things that go with it, which is, you know, which could happen either way. I, I think the problem is that... Um, most men don't know how to date anybody. Right. That that's really what the problem is. I mean, yeah. and, I, and I understand you're writing a book for your particular demographic, but there's these universal truths that that. But so, it, for for instance, if you if you want to date younger women, um, she's gonna want to do some shit. So if I'm 50 years old and I'm da- dating a 20 year old, she wants to go to the water park. I don't want to go to no fucking water park. You know you what know, I'm saying? I just went to a water park <laughs> with my kids. Right, but, well, right, but that's the point. His, some of his friends. Yeah. And but you know, and I went down like some of the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. You're not gonna want to do the same. You're I, not gonna want to do it all the time. Right. I, I'll make that. I'll make that. I mean, if this is what I want, I'll make that that sacrifice but i'm gonna be clear about the fact that i'm making this sacrifice too like this is it's a give and take so uh what are some of the things that you're thinking of uh, like when you say how to date an older woman you said that the aging parents like i i I also want i mean i I, you know I, i find an older woman usually knows what she wants sexually as well. She's she, she knows what works. Yeah, this like, ain't I her. This ain't works. her. For, yeah, yeah. This. I know, and I will tell you. Like I will tell you. Like, hey, you know what? That's not gonna do it for me. Yeah, yeah. Right over here. That's gonna yeah, yeah. do it for me. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm because life is short, so I'm I'm gonna be more open. I think there's also there's the difference with younger women. Um, there's a, I call it like creating self drama. Like there's a self creating drama to make things interesting. I see that with younger women they they like really you know they get into it's kind of that bachelor mindset yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. where it's competitive against other women which is not fun it's just uh, young and stupid it's what you say stupid. i mean you can you know, capsulize it in that yeah, but, yeah. but it's self-created drama and yeah we like things that are crazy but i'll tell you the difference like if you text me at 11 30 first of all i'm going to be like oh my god who in the family is hurt you right, know like right I'm not going to be like, oh, booty call. I'm yeah, going to be yeah. like, what the hell is somebody calling? What is somebody yeah, yeah. texting me at 11? Yeah. <laughs> but I also am going to be open. I'm honest. And, you know, like there's there's better things because we just don't have time for, for the drama. Carrie, did also, you want to say well, no, I also think that I find that in my history, older women, uh, one of the benefits is they're not going to waste a lot of time as far as the dating or the courting process. Meaning like if I got a babysitter, if I got somebody to watch these kids, we're getting down. We're not, I'm not, I'm not going to draw this out for three or four dates. If I'm into you and you, and you prove that you're not weird and you're actually kind of nice, it's yeah, going you, down. You get yeah. somebody's yeah. fucking this pussy. So, somebody. If it ain't you, I'm, I'm doing something because the right. babysitters ain't cheap. That, if you pass that litmus test yeah. of not being a creep, you know, like we're not yet. Yeah, right. And I don't think we're going to be juggling a lot of guys. Like I juggled guys when I was in my 20s, yeah. but that was yeah. sport. It was fun. You know, yeah. it was like going to a bar. And, and then like, really, when you think about it, it really wasn't fun. If you, I mean, if you put it in, if you look at it in retrospect, it's for like, that time, well, I mean, in small amounts. And, and I get what you mean, yeah. but I'm saying in retrospect, like, so for instance, I, I would say to dudes, that, you know, like, I, I don't think I've ever had a one night stand. Like, I've never had somebody where I fucked them once. Um, and the reason why is because sex is never great. 
on the first time it all in it as you get to know each other it's better so the need to f be invested in the fact that this person is important enough to get so that you both please each other is something it is something just it just makes common sense and in your youthfulness because of the fact that you don't know your own value a lot of young guys are like how many girls can i get how many how many and i'm, I'm trying to get the body count up and it's like oh i did this and i did this but was but when you look in retrospect the best sex was the sex that was most intimate with the person that i knew the most and i understood who what who they were what they liked and they and we were compatible oh my you know? god i mean there's nothing better um than when you're with somebody and you can laugh afterwards yeah. and you can do it again or with the connection you know the sexiest thing i mean this is a saying that a lot of people know it's men fall in love with their eyes women fall in love between their ears right. you know like but with that connection when you're looking at somebody and you're having sex you're making love whatever the term you want to use mm. it's like that's the like intense the like that is right. and once you've had it i've talked about it and it's funny because, you know, like I come on camera as part of my living, right. but I'm not myself. But one of the things that's so magical is, you know, like once you've had that connection, it's kind of like eating um, really cheap chocolate and like really good chocolate. Yeah. It's like, God, yeah. you don't want to go back. Yeah, I don't want to go back to that meaningless, you know, because it's bland. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah. okay. You know, and so I'm selective. So when when my subscribers are saying like you know I, I want to see you with a real dick and I and I, I made a welcome message that I just put on there now and I'm just like listen I would too I would like to see that as well mm -hmm. however I'm not just gonna go outside and grab somebody and do it mm -hmm. right. I'm just not you know like I want there to be some kind of something there some connection some connection yeah. that makes it so much better like yeah. it just makes it so much better. So, that's not your jam it's not what you're into you you kind I know, of which is weird yeah what i do but it's like you know that i guess that's why um i was i had an article that i was part of um missy martinez from hustler did this article she was like hey do you want to contribute to special relationships with your um sex toys and i'm like i do have special relationships with my sex toys mm -hmm. right <laughs> they are my collaborators yes here's here's a picture of two of them um because what I'd is, rather that than to just be with some rando. What is the dating life now at this point, or how often? I mean, what 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 goes I, down? <laughs> this is I'm gonna sound really pathetic, but you know what? A lot of these OnlyFans girls will say like, "We're so boring because we work so hard yeah. at doing what we're doing that we kind of live boring lives." Like yeah. you know, like I'm a mom. That's number one. What I am, mm -hmm. number one. Um, but my dating life is not. I have not gone on a real date since I started OnlyFans. So it's been right. over, I mean, it's been well over a year. Of course it was COVID related too. So right, like right, right. my last major relationship ended because he was long distance and COVID happened when we were gonna get together for another weekend. And then that stretched out and and then we broke up. Now a real this. date, does that mean you haven't fucked in, since COVID? That's correct. Wow. And I'm not gonna tell you how far before that, but no, I, oh, wow. I have not, I have not that's embarrassing. It's not but embarrassing, it's I mean. <laughs> You can you can end that streak anytime you want, Elena. This is self-imposed, dear. <laughs> yeah, the, the it's point your is, choice. yeah, you 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 gotta. But I, I mean, get it, can, I get it. Yeah. it. Why you know you get to the point where you you value your time, you value your, your intimacy, and you don't want to waste it on something because you, it's so unsatisfying when it is unsatisfying. Right. You know? It's so well, and, yeah, and and also I do have one hundred percent custody of my kid, mm -hmm. so like. If they come into my world, they're going to come into my world. Right, right. And I am, however selective I am about somebody touching this body. Right, right. Touching him is my yeah. You got to protect him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that's a whole nother. And now what I do for a living. Here's the here's the crazy thing, guys. I don't know if you realize this, but some guys don't want to date somebody that's on camera mm. naked. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I, which I is their date. which is their limit and their you know it's a right. and I respect everybody's that. limit yeah everybody's right. boundary i respect yeah. that because i don't know if i want you know like i can put myself in their shoes you know even yeah. though i'm not having sex with another person i right. can see where that would be off-putting and that's what i've told some of my fans i'm like guys i know that you really want to see this here's the problem 
there are guys that I maybe like, but they don't want to date me mm-hmm. unless I leave this world. Right. So like, you know, leave the OnlyFans world. Right. So right, like right. that doesn't work for me because I'm this, this helps me and I'm financially independent and this is setting me up so I can retire someday. I mean, I'm making so much more money than I was before. And I was in a professional, very, you know, very professional. What did um, you do before? What so was your line of I, for the most part I've done, I did consumer products. Um, mm-hmm. So I was going to Walmart and Target and I was selling like novelty stuff and toys. Um, and then after I had my kiddo, I stayed home. I did um, in-home daycare. I was mm-hmm. very, very wholesome, you know, very mm-hmm. wholesome. Right. And um, and then I sold some stuff. Like I did insurance. I sold cars. That was a really interesting year. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. I can, you know, like I did really well, but if you know anything about car sales, you're there all the time. Right. You are there mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, it's a wicked yeah, it's game. Grueling. And yeah. those, there's a reason that like used car salesmen have that um that stigma yeah. because there, there's some truth to that i yeah. i've worked with some really scuzzy guys yeah, yeah 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 um how old is your son he's 12. and how do you how do you propose to bridge that or have you bridged the whole idea of the only fans and and him coming across it or maybe his you know schoolmates or something you know how do you bridge he, that he knows he knows. Okay. I mean, he knows with to what degree he wants to know. Okay. You know, like he knows, and I talked to him before I even did it. I was like, here's the deal. Again, it makes it a little easier because I'm not with another person on camera. Right. But um, so he knows, and he's just like, okay, that's all I need to know. Like he mm. knows, but he also knows we went to Walt Disney World for a week. Yeah. And we had a great that's time. Good. It and was... I could afford it. Yeah. Right. I could right. afford it, and I could afford making a droid. Yeah. I could afford going to Olga's Cantina. I could afford to do all these really crazy, expensive things that I could never afford to do. Yeah. Before. See, that makes it a lot easier when you yeah. go when they go. Uh, uh, Susan's mom says you're a slut. Yeah. Well, Susan doesn't have Buzz Lightyear and <laughs> you know. doesn't have a dirt bike. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, and I, I ask, you know, we again, we have a really close relationship, and and. He's always known, obviously, he doesn't have a dad. He had a sperm donor. Like, he knows this, and it's always been important. It's kind of like those horror stories you hear about a kid finding out they're adopted, but they find out when they're, like, 17, and then they feel so betrayed. I never wanted that for him in any way. Right. That's probably the better way to go about it because there's no secret. It's weird. Kids will adjust to a lot of things if they – no going into it the surprise is probably more difficult to deal with than anything else it's like a betrayal right like what if to you found extent, out like yeah. you know your mom or something was doing this and <laughs> oh, i hope my mom's not doing it good lord <laughs> my mom is wild for the night but not on only fans i actually so, harry, I, I didn't tell you harry but your mom oh, no your mom does have an only oh, no. i am her See, second subscriber wait no i i heard about this it's an only fans but all she does is talk about how much she wants to kill my dad her ex-husband <laughs> It's you very strange. It's quite if popular. Does it, but... if she does it topless while playing with her boobs. Yeah. She's got an audience. She's got an audience. I'll bring yeah. this up to her at Easter uh, Easter dinner. I told you know I told my mom. So my mom is like a retired teacher. You know, like mm. very like oh my god, if I ever said the f word in front of her, just crazy. Right. And um, yeah, and she, I told her what I did, and at first she was like oh oh, and then I told her how much I was making, and she goes. Oh, Whoa. yeah. Whoa. That teacher salary. You go something else. You go. So you got she's like, you got tenure on OnlyFans. She's like, no, what? <laughs> let me ask you this. When you talk about the OnlyFans, what's the most money that you've heard anybody making? That I've heard anyone making? Yeah, I know somebody. And now she does do porn. So, like, I get this. OK, yeah, yeah. but um, but she had a month and I think it was maybe before she did a lot of porn. Four hundred thousand a month. Wow. In one month, she did four hundred thousand. I know personally one of my very best friends brings in about a hundred thousand a month. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you know it's very typical, hundred and not very typical, but I mean it's like it's and not. What's a, what's, a, what's an average? Well, I mean, if you really go on averages, you'd go really low, but mm. it really depends. It's kind of like saying, what does an average actor make? Mm. What is an yeah, average working actor? Well, well yeah. working actor is is you make. 
you know, you, 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 I mean, a SAG scale is a thousand dollars, thousand dollars a day, an eight hour shift, yeah. something like that or something around. But that. like, I think we're saying is like there, there are working and struggling actors. There are actors who do OK. And yeah, then there's, there's what, actors right. who are the Tom Cruise level where you're making 20 million a, a picture. That, that is what I'm saying. There's yeah. like different tiers. I mean, I'm in the top 1%. I'm like 0.5 or something. And at, mm-hmm. at some point, I was at 0.34 before like the, hey, we're not going to allow porn anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, that craziness that happens. So, I mean, I've done well for a, a solo, but I also know women that are, you know, that do better. You know, I do. I know women that don't do as well. But mm-hmm. like for me, it has been life changing. I mean, I can, I'm, I'm making... Um, you know, I'm making, a, I make, I made six figures last year. I'd never make six, six figures before, even when I was traveling and I was working professionally, I never made six figures before right, right. I made six figures last year. And then that was starting in April, Yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's, it's life changing because I can look at actually retiring someday. Like, yeah. honestly, I really had said uh, almost a, like a year ago. A year and a half ago at this time, and somebody said, well, what are you going to retire? Because I was making like 30 grand a year selling insurance. And Mm -hmm. I was like, I'll never retire. I have a kid to take care of. I don't want to be a burden to him. Mm -hmm. I will be done. I will will work until I die, until I drop. You know, now I can actually see, like, I can put money away. I can help him make sure that he's taken care of forever. You know, like, as far as college and getting to college and all those things that you want. Yeah. You know, that I, I I always hoped I would find a partner to help me achieve. Now I'm doing it on my my own. So right, right. it's better. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we're gonna do a little bit, Harry. Can we uh are we about at that time, Harry? Yeah, can it's we, about time. Let's do a little something do on the Patreon. Something on the Patreon, a little behind the scenes. We'll go dig in a little bit deeper and, and whatever. But um plug your OnlyFans or whatever it is you want to And the plug. book as well. And the book. Yeah, so okay, so the book. Um, the book is, is just kind of fun. It's, oh, and I recorded my own, um, for Audible and iTunes. Oh, nice. nice. So that was really fun because the poor guy that I came into the studio, I was like, I'm going to do an audio book and <laughs> this is what it's called. And you goes, Whoa, this is going to be fun. Uh-huh. And then he was like a guy in his fifties. And so <laughs> I'm talking all about like this book for young, for young guys. And he's just like, just for the record. I mean, just so you know, it doesn't matter, but I don't have to take a blue pill. And I'm like, all right. Uh-huh. I mean, he wasn't coming on to me, but I right, think right, he right. Like, felt like he needed to yeah, explain yeah. that not all older guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyways, How to Date Hot Older Women by Elena St. James, a mature model. That's me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not, not long. It's a quick read or it's 36 minutes on Audible, um, but it's $4.99 on, on uh, Amazon. So it's really cheap. So okay. my only fan, you can find me every place, really. So I have I have a YouTube channel where I talk about cheese curds mm-hmm. and um, Danish Kringle because I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> you know, like I so I do kind of mainstream stuff. So if you yeah. like to eat, um, but I'm also on Twitter, Elena St. James. I'm on Instagram, Elena St. James. I have five official pages there because you never know when they're going to get rid of you. Mm-hmm. Um, I do TikTok. I have one TikTok that has like been seen like over 10 million times. Mm-hmm. Um so that's fun. But the obviously where I make my money, and by the way, the scammers out there, I will never ask you for money. What I what how I make my money is on OnlyFans and Fansly and those type of sites. Mm-hmm. And it's Elena underscore Saint underscore James. But you really probably just find me best at either my website, elenastjames.com, or I made one really easy for the guys that don't like spelling. It's I want Elena.com and that will give you a link right to my OnlyFans. Okay. Dope, dope. Thank you so much. Harry, talk to me. Uh, you just go to my stuff at Harry Trajanian. That's where all my uh, social media is. Uh, you know, my TikTok, my YouTube, the whole thing. Uh, everything Dante Nero, Google me. You know how to get me. If you need a one on one consultation, hit me at Dante Nero.com. Click on consult. You can book time with me. Don't forget the Patreon. Do support us on the Patreon because that's what helps us continue to do this. Check out our YouTube channel. Um, check out the Man School Instagram, all that stuff. There's clips going up. Harry's busting his hump, taking care of that. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcasted. We are out. <laughs>